Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Discussing Digital. Uh, today, I'm discussing digital marketing with Remy Manthera. Remy, would you like to introduce yourself, then talk a bit about your business, just a general introduction, and then a little bit about how you use digital marketing, and then we'll start exploring what we've been talking about before the show, as well as what you mentioned in that introduction. Yeah, of course. First of all, thank you for inviting me. And it's super fun to, to be here and have this conversation around digital. That's and cool. so I'm Remy Mancera. I am a personal brand strategist and I am specialized in personal brand story. And I guide uh, course creators, coaches, service providers to explore their journey and identify moments of their story that are connected to the key factors of what they offer. Brilliant. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> obviously we're talking about, about digital marketing. So would you like to, to, to start with on that? So how do you use digital marketing for your business to promote your business? And then we'll talk more and we're certainly going to explore everything you talk about, your per, your personal brand and your story connection framework, which we're going to come on to, which I think is really interesting. Sure. So... Um, Myself, my business, I do uh, content creation. This is one of the things to show uh, my framework, my approach to work, um, clients' results, and my personality, all of that. And I am doing a lot of social media, especially at the moment, and podcasts. So I have, uh, uh, as a big uh, form content i am creating my my podcast where i talk about personal brand story i bring guests to talk about that and so we have a conversation about their experience and at the same time i can uh, bring some highlighting some points of why it's important to do so or also addressing some misconceptions i would say yeah so i do a lot of that and then i i I do networking. So I participate in networking events, participate in private communities where I can uh, meet people. And it doesn't need to be about finding a client. It's also about collaborations. It's also about referrals. So building connections that you don't know which kind of opportunities can, can bring later. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going back to your social media. So obviously you've shared with me that, that um, your two main social media channels are, are, are LinkedIn and Instagram. Uh, and then obviously you've got, you've, got a, you've got a YouTube channel and then your podcast and your website. So that, that, they're the kind of like the main things. But if we just sort of explore a little bit about LinkedIn and, and Instagram, um, do, do you have a preference? Do, or do you, well, for, first off, do you do the same content on both? And then secondly, you know, if not, what drives the content on each of the platforms, if that makes sense? Mm, yeah, that makes sense. At the moment, I am mostly having the same content in both, just for repurposing reasons and for time concerns. I am a solopreneur myself, so I need to um, take care of where I, I put my, my efforts. Uh, so at the moment I am sharing both in the same uh, the same content in both, but I would I have a bit more focus on Instagram where you also can share stories mm -hmm. and have conversations. And I know some of your previous uh, um, guests that have talked about that in, that how conversations can be easier on on Instagram. I, I yeah. agree on that. Um, then, but LinkedIn. For my business, since I started, have uh, been me a lot of good connections and mm -hmm. opportunities to connect with uh, different ages in the scene. So not just the people that uh, might become a client, but also people that collaborate with me, doing live streamings and other kind of stuff. So there is like these two different scenarios, but... At the end of the day, for me, the most important part is the connection that you do with the real people. Yeah, yeah. So they are tools. And then because I do a lot of networking and then later I have the conversation with people that I have met in those. And some of them, they use more LinkedIn. Some of them, they use more Instagram. So I have both channels open and I can have conversation with, in one place or another. Yeah, and yeah. Something... Yes. Sorry? 
Yeah, so something I I haven't mentioned this before to you, but something that I would like to highlight is I don't do a lot of Facebook content, but I participate in Facebook groups. Right, okay, yeah. Certain great uh, Facebook groups. And this is from when I started my business. The first thing that I thought is, okay, where is the people gathering? People that I would like to help, <laughs> yeah. that I would like to help serve. Where are they already? They are there already. How I can go there instead of trying to make all of them coming to me. Yeah. And yeah. for that, I would say Facebook groups can work really well. Mm -hmm. You need to choose the ones that are active, that they are moderated. and and But there are some, especially private groups that somehow are connected to some kind of paid uh, offer program or even software that you are using and that there is this kind of um, private groups. That works uh, well for me for doing, again, networking and yeah. connecting to people and, and meeting people because you know the topic that is in, they are interested in already because they are part of that group. So yeah. that has helped also. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's a really good point. So we, we, we didn't discuss it beforehand. And, and obviously, it's not a, fo a focus for you for content because you, you didn't share a particular Facebook page. Um, but I think that's really a, a really um, powerful and, and relevant thing to say that actually, um, you know, not necessarily having your own business page there or promoting your own content, but being finding communities on Facebook, which is seems to have been something that Facebook has become, you know, sort of did a big driver of for a few, a few years ago. Uh, I think that's a really, a really good strategy. Um, mm. You know, but as you say, you've got to find the right groups, find groups that are active because there's an awful lot of groups out there that yeah. aren't active or actually when you get in to see them being in inverted commas active, um, they're not really, it's just sort of like a business keep putting content into it, but there's no, engagement with that it's almost like advertising so yeah i think that's a that, that, that's a that's a really good tip and an interesting strategy for people to think about and also it it depends also in which is your audience because yeah, yeah if your audience are teenagers yeah probably facebook groups it's not the place that they are going to be yeah but uh, it depends on on what is that's why it's so important to actually know your audience and and think about okay what are their interests and sometimes even think a bit outside the box uh at the be when i started my business i was focusing on helping course creators and what i did i was following different podcasts that were for course creators and some of them they have communities they have groups so i was there interacting with them and again I, I was just starting, so they didn't know me, but I well, was, okay, I'll go there, I'll try to help them. If they are asking something that I can help them with, I will interact, just honestly participating and, and being just connecting with them just for real. Yeah. And that was super helpful. Also to learn what was their concerns, uh, what was the things that they were looking for, for so you get a better understanding of their situation yeah yeah and it's almost where you start you know, you know obviously a lot of what we're going to talk about in a minute is about starting conversations about you and, and things like that but that's part of it isn't it it's actually where you you know you go and find the right community start having those conversations and those making those connections um mm -hmm. and then it sort of um you know naturally flows um from there into you know some some people you're going to have conversations with that lead into um you know factor into, into into business um so yeah i think we think that's probably a good point to to, to uh explore into that and something there's something that flashed into my head and it's flashed straight out again that i was going to talk that, that i was going to talk about so if it does come to come back come to me and i end up going back to something then um it just goes to show that, it, that, it, that, that, that I've still got some grey brain cells that <laughs> work. <laughs> um, so actually, that kind of, it kind of leads nicely into the Story Connector framework that we've talked about that, you, that you've developed to help mm -hmm. people develop content to tell their own personal brands and personal stories. 
So would you like to kind of just give a bit more of an explanation about it and your thinking, and then we can sort of explore that a little bit more as well? Yeah, sure. So these frameworks uh, was born based on my clients' needs because first, a lot of them, they had the impression that they don't have an epic story and they was worried about how my story will be relevant for my audience and for my business. So having those two main ideas, I was, okay, first, you... Yeah, you have a big life. In your life, you have several moments that they are interested to share and you don't need this Hollywood narrative. With your own life, your story is 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 interesting, but the most important part is choosing strategically which moments of your story you, you share. And then the second idea was how overwhelming could be to have this big story so I thought, okay, let's split and let's choose 10 moments of your story. But each of them will be connected to one specific key factor. That way, you know exactly why you are sharing those because you have you know the reason. So let's say you want to highlight specific skill that you have. You bring one story that showcase that. And that way it's easier for you. It's like a bridge for you to talk about that benefit. And that's something that, for example, my clients, when they are in sales calls, they use that those stories as a way to talk about specific benefit that they want to highlight. But it's in a nice way and it's in a way where they, they connect better with their audience. Yeah. And the audience understand their context of why you work with certain people, why you are focusing on certain problem, why is important to you? What are your values, your approach to, to work? So using stories to highlight those elements is a nice way to create that connection with your audience. And also when you are in front of new audiences, those stories can help you to build trust. Yeah. Which yeah. is really important, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it's interesting um, what you've just said there and, and sort of what you've said as part of your earlier conversation, that understanding and telling those stories uh, and having those 10 points related to each story not only gives you content in a digital world, uh, which we know can be a challenge for people to create, how do I keep creating social media content and things like that. Yeah. But was, I, I like the fact that you said, you know, you, you can use it when you're networking and, um, but I love that also when you're on sales calls and, and having sales meetings and things like that. So um, it's it, it's really good um, sort of the fact that you can use this one idea across many th uh, in, in many areas, which um, I know you also mentioned somewhere um, repurposing content. Um, so again, it, fix, it feels into falls into that because again, I'm a big advocate of repurposing content um, yeah. because again, we're, we're all. You know, we've only got 168 hours in a week um, and you can only use that so many ways. So actually spending it to develop something that you can use multiple times um, yeah. is actually a very wise thing to do, I think. Yeah, and sometimes uh, clients came to me because they want to refresh their About Me page or they yeah. want to create their content creation a strategy and having these stories as a starting point to build different uh, content. And... It's nice when I got their feedback nine months after or several months after working together, how they told me about, yeah, I have been using these in these several ways. Uh, I, I have the clarity of I know which story to use in which context yeah. and why I am using it. So having the confidence to decide which story to use because they know exactly what they want to highlight, which is super powerful. And by my... One of the things that is interesting to me is connect, collecting creative ways to use your story. So that's mm -hmm. connected to the idea of repurposing. So of course you can use, if you are, are doing some public speaking or interviews, but there are more creative ways. Like for example, if you have a photo shoot, how in that photo shoot you can include elements of your stories that are a way to start a conversation. Again, the topic, the idea of how we start conversation with people that we might help. 
So they we have a conversation, we get to know what they need, and we get to help them decide if our solution is the good fit for them or not, which is yeah. totally yeah. fine. No, I, I I really I really like that. I think I think it's so 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 good. <laughs> Thank um, you. <clears throat> and kind of link to that because I, I I yeah we've talked about a bit about social media. Um, and obviously we're on a, we're recording a podcast, but you run your own podcast. So um, do you want to talk a little bit about your podcast as well? Let's talk a little bit about that and, and how how you've built that because again, you you were telling me how you've evolved it from basically some LinkedIn live some some live streams things you did which were tea and strategy i think and now it's become a podcast so yeah. explain a bit more to our, our, our viewers listeners how, how that journey has helped as well yeah sure so yeah i have uh, done like 20 live interviews it was the series was called strategy and tea and this were was in um in a time where i was focusing mainly on helping course creators with their strategies and now when I started my my focus pivot and I, I, I now focus on personal brand story, I decided that finally it was time to do a, a podcast because I, I love listening to podcasts. So I always uh, had this uh, desire of, okay, I want to start a podcast like one day, having conversations. So when I focus on stories, I, I thought, okay, this is the perfect uh, medium where you have just a conversation and the person can explain their story but I wanted to not just go into them sharing their personal brand story but also having a conversation about the behind the scenes challenges of how you decide what to share how is the process of okay do you get help do you do by yourself how is the impact of sharing your story? What are has been the feedback that you get? Uh, the moments where you saw like, okay, actually sharing my story has an impact in my audience, in specific people reaching out to me, telling how my story has maybe been inspiring for them or, or the way that for them to take action. So I, I thought that the podcast will be a good medium for that and at the same time a way for me to position myself in that specialization so I am the one running the the podcast also sometimes I am providing some context I'm explaining elements so it's helping me as well to position and to build a network of yeah connections with the guests and and you having a podcast sometimes open you doors that yeah. otherwise will be difficult yeah. in the sense of just by trying to invite someone, you have a starting, again, starting a conversation with someone, right? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, let's be honest, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation if I hadn't been running a podcast and somebody you met was a previous guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that kind of combination of how you met someone and the how the relationship is different when you are inviting someone to your space and 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 giving them a space to to share about their messaging their business their stories so yeah. that's a um something that i was not so aware i was aware until a point but then uh going through the process i i really understand that yeah, yeah. No, I th I think that's really good. And, and as you say, I, I love the fact that uh, you know we we've been on a similar journey because I think you started your podcast just over a year ago, which is about the same time as we as discussing digital. So it's uh, it's fascinating that there are a number of points where we've had a pre-show chats where we we've got a very similar uh, sort of mindset. So that's, and on a similar journey. So I think that's really interesting. Um, and I realized one of the things that we didn't talk about when we talk about your content uh, that you'd asked me to kind of maybe talk about was that you're doing a kind of um, a series of videos around your um, story connectors thing. So you, you've got a, a series of 30 videos that you're doing sort of like, which from, from I've watched a couple of them. I haven't had a chance to watch all 30, I'm afraid. Um where you're kind of focusing on how you've helped particular people and their particular highlights. So, do you want to talk a little bit more about those? Because I think that I think they're well worth people going to have a have a look at them. 
on, on, on yeah, your channels. Of course. I thought that I wanted to create something related to my framework um, that explained the framework, but in a practical way where you get an example, but at the same time, you get also a prompt for your own case. So you watch this video and at the end, you will have a question to ask to yourself and to create something from that. Mm. I love being super practical, yeah. but at the same time, I love to be strategic. So what I thought, okay, how, where I am collecting these samples from, I am collecting these samples from my own clients so each of those 30 videos is from a client of mine mm. so at the same time that I am creating an example explaining you my framework I am giving you a prompt so you can do a practical step but also I am positioning myself by sharing okay I am working with real people that are real results and I am specializing to that I have all these examples and more because obviously is one example for person and each of the people that work with me, they get a set of 10. But just wanted to invite our listeners to be strategic in the things that you do yeah. because it takes a lot of time uh, and you need to put effort into that. Let's do it in a way that serves you in several ways but serve your audience as well. So it's yeah. that win-win situation. Yeah. No, I th and I think they're, they're really good, actually, in so many ways. They il illustrate your framework, illustrate how you've helped people, uh, and as well as being thought-provoking, watching them to go away and create their own content. So, no, really good. Um, yeah, so definitely uh, well worth going and finding those. Uh, I know they're on your Instagram channel, because that's where I was, I was watching them, but I presume that, from what you said, they're on LinkedIn. Are they, are they on YouTube as well, or...? Uh, not yet, because uh, I'm still going in the process of uh, releasing the 30 of them. And my idea is to, I am all about repurposing. So when I finish the series on, on Instagram and LinkedIn, I will convert that into an email sequence. Right. Because I, I believe that that's also a nice way where you get into your own email inbox. So yeah. going back to that idea of repurposing and how you can use it, it's going to be the same content. I am going to repurpose as uh, you need for the channel that I am going to use. And yeah, and I, I, that's something that I want to mention is how if someone from the audience wants to have a look of them, they can send me a message. And that way I can handpick some of them that could be really relevant for them right. because that way I, if it's someone with a certain expertise, I can send them examples that might be more relevant for them. Okay. And yeah, so back to the repurposing idea. So yeah, that the idea is to use them later as an email sequence and probably moving them to YouTube when they are the whole series. So I, yeah. I have a playlist where all of them are listed there. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. I love that. And uh, again, repurposing is such a key, key phrase we're having today, uh, which is good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm, I'm conscious of where we're at with time. So um, I wondered whether we could sort of move on. As I, I sort of, um, I ask all of my guests to give everyone uh, two tips. The first one is something that's really good to go away and do that, that there's huge benefit from them. And obviously the second one is uh, something you've learned not to do uh, because it's not worked for you. Um, so do you want to start off with uh, your, your good tip? So what, what would you recommend people to do? Yeah, something that has worked for me is the, that combination of content marketing and networking. And because when you go to a networking event, for example, you can share your website, of course, but it's more difficult that people arrive to your website and send you a message yeah. or start a conversation there. That's why I always like to invite them also to my social media channel or asking them, hey, in which channel you are more frequently participating and things like that. So I, look, I do a lot of online networking uh, because for it's super comfortable to me. Yeah. I always uh, joke that uh, Zoom is my safe space. And then when I do in-person events, always also it's like making them go to a place where 
the conversation is easy to start. Yeah. When they arrive to my social media, I want my social media to work as the window shop of a when you go and you go through a street and you let's say you see a library. No, a library, no, a bookshop is um you see their, their window shop and you have an understanding of what's inside. If you just have a window with black color and nothing in it, you don't have any idea of which kind of books you can buy inside or what items they, they sell. Yeah. So looking at your own social media as this, okay, when someone arrives here, they understand what I do. They understand the kind of services that I provide. They have an understanding of what is my approach to work. We want that. Yeah. As in our website, we want them to have an understanding of what we do. Things about the, for example, in on Instagram, think about the highlights and and your bio as the menu in your website. You want to have that easy to understand. They can go and check. So have that. It's not just about having certain aesthetics or colors or that. It's also about, okay, I go there, I understand what this person is about, what is their business about. Yeah, no, no that's perfect. That's brilliant. I think it's a really, really good tip. I, I love the way you've kind of expanded it as well. Fantastic. Um, and then secondly, it's the, uh, oh, this is what I've learned that, I've learned that it's not, not good uh, or don't do it type thing. Yeah, what I would not suggest is doing what I am doing, which is actually not doing something. Uh, we know that email marketing is one of the ways to connect uh, and really to build and nurture that relationship with people. And I am lacking of my own email marketing strategy. I am trying to, to fix that. But yeah, I have been in business almost six years. And it's like, okay, I know that email marketing is important, but I have been somehow not taking care of it. So yeah, that's something that I would suggest for people to, even at the beginning, start with something simple. You don't need complicated email sequences. You don't need um, a lot of emails to send. Just having something, collecting the people um emails and having conversations start building that conversation through emails um but yeah is that that's something that is lacking in my business and i know that could help me so that's why i'm focusing now on solving okay it. no that's really good and, and interestingly uh I, I i think these episodes of recording uh, of discussing digital are me of me admitting things that i don't do that well and i i, I suggest people others people should because i as we said when we discussed this before we started recording uh, I'm I'm in the same boat, right? I think email marketing is a really powerful tool. Everyone should be doing it, and I'm not at the moment. But I I I am at least making progress because I've recently signed up to a CRM system that uh, has got email marketing as part of, as one of the tools. Um, so I am now in the process of actioning that. But uh, yeah, it, I, it's been on my to do list for way too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know this uh, in Spanish we have this saying of. In blacksmith house, they have wooden knives. So <laughs> I I believe we are that, in that situation. Yeah, yeah. That... <laughs> and and, and I, I love that phrase. Absolutely love it. I'm going to try and take that one away <clears throat> and use it as an English version of that. But I suspect it probably sounds better in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, <clears throat> so we will share all your social media links uh, as part of the show notes uh, for for this episode, um, but what's the best way to contact you, particularly where you said about um, if our listeners or viewers want to kind of contact you and, and be uh, sort of delve a bit more deeply into your um, s series of videos um, mm -hmm. about your um, connection frame, connectors framework so that they, what, where, where should they reach out to you for that? Yeah. The best two ways will be Instagram or LinkedIn DMs. They are open to anyone to just uh, contact me. And yeah, I would love for them if they have specific concern related to uh, personal branding story or how to use story in a strategic way. 
I love to get uh, to know their question. Uh, maybe I have some resource that I can share with them uh, uh, to help them and maybe just, you know, sometimes it's just starting, having that starting step, right? Yeah. So yeah. if I can somehow one of my epi podcast episodes can help them to get this inspiration or some of these videos prompts. So yeah, I would love that. So yeah, <clears throat> just DM me and I'll be at the other side of the screen. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's brilliant. Thank you. And so just just uh sort of finally I just have to say thank you so much for being a guest on 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 this episode of Discussing Digital. Really enjoyed our chat today. Uh it's been really good. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to me. Mm -hmm.